Hey guys, I apologize for the unnatural looking lighting today because it's kind of cloudy outside and when it's cloudy this room gets a little dark and so I had to open the curtains and that caused a little bit of light glare. But anyway, um, I'm going to introduce you to one of the oldest and strangest Sears smoke detectors that I've ever seen that I know of. Um, now this right here is a Sears Early One smoke detector, and at first glance it looks pretty normal. It doesn't look any different from any, you know, regular one. But if you take a little closer look, you'll notice that it is a little different, you know. Uh, for one, I don't see any test button on here anywhere. You know, not on the side, not anywhere. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is the side vents are a little strange. They're normally... Uh, a little bit taller and they normally have like a dividing line in between them. Uh, but that's just the beginning uh, because this is uh, by far I believe it is the first Sears Early One model that they ever made. Um, now I'm not sure about that. There could have been an earlier one but this is this is it. This is the first one that essentially premiered the Early One lineup for Sears. Now here's the box, and you can clearly see that it's a very much simpler box. It doesn't have any sort of like ink printing on it. Like the whole box is just cardboard with with uh, writing on it. Um, so it's really simple. It's really just not much to it. This is model number nine five seven zero seven, and that already tells you that it's old because it predates the eight-digit model numbers of the other ones, like, you know, at the 246.57045, or like 350.57046, all those. Um, and so, yeah, there was real, the, when I saw this, I was like, hmm, because the way that I normally uh, determine whether it's a BRK rebrand or a Cerberus rebrand is uh, normally the, the first three digits before the the decimal point, the 246 or the 350, 246 is BRK. That designates that it's a BRK rebrand, and 350 designates that it's a Firenetics rebrand, and I cannot remember the uh, Cerberus rebrand one. I think it's like 273 or something like that. I don't remember. Um, yeah, and then the gateway was, I also can't remember that one. Um, but anyway, so you get the idea. Um, so this one didn't have that three-digit uh, prefix, so I couldn't tell what this was a rebrand of. Um, and I thought, could it be? Could it be? And, um, well, it came today, and I opened it up, and sure enough, it was. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up for you. Now, uh, you'll also notice that the cover twists off, unlike the... Uh, other ones where the cover just simply pulls off like a regular first alert SA76RS or something like that. So I'm going to twist it off. It twists off kind of like a the mounting bracket on a Sunbeam Centurion or a Guardian FB1. Um, so I'll lift the cover off. And here's the inside. And you may, if you have been with me for a long time or you've been just in uh, smoke detector community, or so, I should say, uh, for a long time, you may recognize this circuit board. This is a BRK SS74R circuit board. Um, so this unit is a rebranded BRK SS74R. This is the first one, first complete one that I've ever seen. Um, and the reason why I say it looks familiar is um, Cassette Master has a circuit board of one of these. Uh, now his is a little bit older, I believe, but uh, he he has one of these, and he said he has the cover and base to it, but I don't know. He hasn't gave us given us any updates on it in over ten years. So, um, but yeah, this is a very very strange unit. I've never seen anything like it. Um, this is, as far as I know, the first example of an SS seventy four, our complete one that I've seen. Um, but the funny thing is I thought that the SS74R was square and it looked kind of like the BRK, like the 79DCRI. Um, I'm beginning to believe that the SS74R was round and it looked kind of like this, probably with a 
cover more similar to an uh, SA-76 RS. Um, but yeah, uh, another strange thing is that um, uh, this one contains a, or uses a 10.7 volt mercury battery. That was one of the things that Cassette Master had mentioned in his video. Um, those batteries obviously are not sold anymore. I don't even think you... I I've never heard of them. Um, I'd never seen one, actually. Um, I'm not sure if Nathaniel has one. He's, he has an 11.2 one. Um, I do have a few 12.6 volt ones downstairs, but they're long dead. But yeah, that was another... The 10.7 was another uh, example of the mercury battery that um, was banned due to the mercury content. Um, and, yeah, the circuit board is screwed onto the base with these three screws, and this one goes to this metal plate under it, which I'm not sure why that is. So here's your horn, and I originally thought that it was a delta alarm horn, but looking closer at it, it doesn't say delta alarm on the top of the, the casing. Um, I'm beginning to think that this is actually that oddball no-name horn that were used in a lot of Honeywell TC-49As, um, and I've also seen these used a few times in um, First Alert SA769ACs, the plug-in models, um, but I'm not sure wh uh, who made these. They are not Delta Alarm. They, they look kind of like Delta Alarm because they have the crimpings on the sides there, you can see. So yeah, um, the diaphragm resembles a Kobishi though, so they might be a Kobishi model, I don't know. Um, the sensor is right here, and it's a very small, it's it's reminiscent of actually a Entronic sensor, the Entronic Vigilante, like the Z700 or the Z100 uh, or the um, ES7 that I looked at a few months ago. Um, it has a removable target on top, and the target, I actually have not tried to remove this yet, um, it comes off, and you're able to clean inside of the sensor. Uh, let me see if I can get this off with one hand. It's Of course, it hasn't come off since it was put on in the factory. So, uh, it is it is wiggling a little bit, so it might come off for me. I really do want to... I don't want to break it. Or, like... Okay, there's one latch. There it is. Okay. So there you can see... Down in there is the radioactive material, and here's the other, the underside of the target. It's got this little dimple. Now, um, cassette masters contained radium-226, which was something that I thought was very unique. I'm going to put this back on. Um, and I thought that's what kind of gave me the idea that his was an entronic board at first, because, you know, it had a, a mercium, or it had radium-226 instead of Americium. But if I, I... I looked at this one and it didn't say um, in anything on here other than target. Uh, but then I found this label on the side, which is actually the model information label. And it says that it contains radio, um, Americium 241. So this is most likely a later model. If I could get this to focus, there you go. Uh, 2.5 mercury curie, so it's a little bit less than the standard... 79R, SA76RS. Um, yeah, the model number on here is listed as 57071, which actually does correspond with the suffix, the last part of the later model numbers, the at least the amount of digits. Um, but yeah, this is just a overall weird detector, and there you can see the SS74 up there. You'll also notice it has two sensitivity adjustment knobs. I'm not sure what it needs two for. Um, I've seen that before. FireNetics used two in, for some reason, but uh, yeah. There's your main capacitor right there. And then up here we have the test socket, which we have seen in many older detectors, and uh, we weren't sure what it was for until we discovered that it's for accessories. Um, so, like, if, there, if this had a heat sensor... The heat sensor contacts would plug into there. Um, I've also seen them used with relays, um, you know, any external uh, tripping devices like that. So, 
Uh, that's what the test socket was used for. Obviously, this one isn't being used because it doesn't have a heat sensor or a test button or anything. Um, but basically, that's just a contact point for all the connections in the unit. Um, and a vacuum tube does fit in there. I have uh, seen people do that. So now let's look at the cover. Uh, the cover looks very uh, basic, like the regular Sears, you know, traditional 16 sections with the four rows of vents. Um, and the four side vents. However, it does twist on. And one thing that I found interesting is that these two tabs on the base and on the, the cover are not evenly spaced. So, like, the space between these two is greater than these two and these two. So I thought that was weird and also kind of um, not very good because you can, like, put it on wrong, which is really annoying. Yeah, so the inside of the cover, there is some labeling. So it doesn't say the model number in here at all. Um, it says caution, continues to read material, return, or repair for disposal, Sears Roebuck Company. And then up here, it says, before cleaning, disconnect the power source by either removing the batteries, unplugging the remote transformer, or switching off the main circuit breaker. Next, remove the aluminum target by unsnapping it with fingertip pressure applied around the edges. A remote transformer, I've never heard of that before, uh, but I assume that was some accessory that they sold. Um, after a short air drying period, put the target back into place and disconnect, reconnect power. Failure to clean this unit at least once a year may result in false alarms. And then here the round ion chamber with the gold dot in the center under the target is now accessible for cleaning. Clean the inside of the ion chamber, including the gold dot and the bottom side of the target by using a cotton-tipped applicator dipped in alcohol. Um, and then also right here, you'll notice there's a circle, which indicates a place for a test button to go. So there might have been a model of this that had a test button. Um, You'll also notice that this one vent is partially closed. That's because of the cover latch. So yeah, um, so let's take a look at the box. I know this video is already pretty long, but there's just so much to say about this rare, unique detector. So you have your Sears tag on the side, the Sears cell tag. It's actually, this was on clearance. It was for $29. Or I'm sorry, that's the, uh, that's something else. It's for, it's for $47. And then it was on clearance for $22. Um... These two sides are the same, and then this the front part, and then the back just says fragile, delicate electronic instrument. The, yeah, those are the same. And then this side has the chart, the chart of lies, where it tells you that Sears smoke detectors will detect when it's just smoldering smoke, which is not true. So on the inside of the box, the detector came in a sort of a plastic wrapped, it was like shrink wrapped in this plastic. Kind of like a Honeywell, like the Honeywell CD200A or TC89Bs came in this. And it originally came with a battery. It would have gone there, but it, this one did not come with a battery. I did not get it with the battery. I did, however, get the mounting hardware and the manual. So let's take a look at the manual. So you got owner's manual, the early one, 957071. So apparently this one was 57071, not 5707. Um, and if you want to read it, just pause. I'll point out anything interesting that I see. I've already read this, so, yeah. And here's your diagram. See, so you got your target test output socket. And they call the battery the primary power cell in here. And then here's a cool diagram of how to uh, maintain and clean the detector. And then there's how to test it. It's your fire safety checklist. Which is pretty cool, actually. I know that, notice there's some things in here that would, uh, not apply to today, probably, um, where was it? 
Oh, does the TV antenna have a lighting arrestor? Or lightning arrestor? <laughs> like, nobody's gonna use that. Like, we don't use TV antennas anymore. We use satellite dishes and cable. Yeah, um, and then here is your California State Fire Marshal. Now, this is dated March 28th of 1975, so the detector was probably manufactured around then. Um, what every family member should know about escaping a fire. All right, um, and then there's your full one-year warranty. It did not come with a warranty registration card, so I'm assuming it was just implemented into the detector when you bought it. Um, so yeah, uh, I will try to make a test video of this. I'm not sure if it'll work with a regular 9 volt. Um, I'm not going to test it in this video because this video is already long enough. So this is just going to be the kind of overview. Um, also, I could not do an unboxing because I had to disinfect the entire packaging. Um, obviously, due to the uh, pandemic that's going around this today. So yeah, um... That is about it for this part of the video, so, uh, that is the Sears early one, 9-57071. Thank you for watching, and more to come.